So good morning, Rabbi. Good morning, Joe. Time and again, we hear the old expression, spare the rod and spoil the child. Uh, my mother was quick to grab a switch if ever I misbehaved. And I always found that that did not make me act better, just get improve my ability to avoid getting caught. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, is it a, in, in personal and in, and in Judaism? Is it is, is, is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth apply to raising children? No, it doesn't. And what you just pointed out is exactly what happens with people that use a switch or a strap or a backhand on their child. What the child learns to do is either avoid getting caught, create situations to get out of it, or just lie. Anyway, it doesn't work. Now, the argument, if you want to make it, should be based on the science and research, not on your gut feeling, well, grandma did it, or I think it's a good idea. You don't do that with your medication for coronary heart disease. I find it fascinating that people will resort to science, diabetic, take insulin. But when I use science for other things, they don't listen. They don't follow it. So that's always been a fascinating discussion. We just returned from Ocean City, had a great time. We stayed at the Sea Watch, wonderful set of, it's a condominium, it's a high rise. It's 18 or 19 floors and it's shaped like a triangle with an atrium in the middle overlooking the ocean. It was picture perfect, indoor pool, outdoor pool. And around the pool is a, a raised kind of a not a boardwalk, but it's a raised area. May I interject that Siege Watch is not a paid sponsor of this program. Please continue. So I became a habit to get my coffee and go down eight, nine, seven, eight o'clock and stay till about 10. And I could watch the ocean and the dune and I could watch people at a little bit of a distance, leave the condo, walk the walkway, go up over the dune down to the beach and I got to see some things that were very, very upsetting. Many times, more often than I would like to see, I would watch a one parent, usually the a husband, a father, a male, carrying umbrellas, chairs, toting a wagon. In fact, they reminded me of the Sherpa guides helping people summit Mount Everest. And here they are heading over this walkway, which is a sand, concrete and sand on top, heading towards the beach. And following behind would be a, a woman, I assume a mother, toting a child. What was upsetting is where the child would stop, not wanting to go to the beach, and the mother would smack the kid. And I, could, I was in listening distance, and I heard mothers say to the kids, do you want me to give you something to cry about? Stop crying, or I'll give you something to cry about, whack. I actually watched one mother take the child by the collar and drag them over the sand and over the tube. And my thought was, do I call the police? Do I call 911? Do I intervene? Do I run over? And I decided it wouldn't be in the best interest of the child. Even if the parents stopped, the child would be up for another beating. And then the parent would use that to say to the child, there's no one here for you now. So it would just be worse. And I found that very upsetting. We were in Ocean City. We heard the shore. We came to have a good time. Why would you hit your child and say to them, I'll give you something to cry about? What kind of parenting is this? Very, very bizarre, Joe. Very, very upsetting. This research indicates that hitting, spanking, beating your child does not lead to better behavior. As I mentioned at the beginning, take issue with the research, with the science. Don't argue with whether you should do it or not. It's not supported. If your goal is to have your child listen, behave, or do things properly, there are other strategies. Then there were some fun things. I'm sitting and, and I look up and it's the third or fourth floor and a little girl is up on the balcony, maybe four or five, 
and it looks like a can of spray sunblock. And of course, first she does this, but then she sprays the railing and she's spraying the cross piece. I see her mother come out on the porch and her mother looks at it. I could not hear the words, but I could hear the tone. The mother just thought this was really very entertaining, walked over to the child, took the can, sprayed the child, took the can, walked back in. No yelling, no screaming, no punishment, no saying that any, it, it's a four-year-old. It's a spray can. That was entertaining. That's fun. So why would you, and then I'm walking through the atrium and coming out the door to, get, to go ahead towards the beach. And this little four or five-year-old boy is standing there crying, I don't wanna to go to the beach, I'm not gonna to go to the beach. And her dad, um, it was a boy, his dad standing there and looking at him. And the boy had a t-shirt about the beach. And I, I said, the beach, I'm going to the beach. What are we gonna do? And I started talking with him and he, he looked at me he stopped crying, stopped everything kind of quizzically. And then he just slowly walked over to his dad. They walked to the beach. As opposed to the parent who was beating the child and screaming, I'll give you something to cry about. Two different styles of parenting. And it's upsetting that you're coming to a place to have a good time. So stop crying and enjoy yourself. <laughs> right. And maybe parents had a, a difficult, it's all understandable. I'm a parent, I, I understand, but that doesn't excuse. And I introduce something. What is the goal? If the goal is to have a good time and get the child to the beach, then hitting them and dragging them by the collar over the sand isn't going to accomplish the goal. So yeah. what is your advice in those moments? What, do, what should we do? You have to stop and say, what's the goal? We're at the beach. We're here to have a good time. Obviously, the little person doesn't want to go to the beach. Gee, is the sand hot on their feet? Or were they enjoying cartoons? What, what's getting in the way of having a good time? We're adults. I think what's so upsetting is you're the adult and yet you're acting on emotion like a child. You're having your own temper tantrum. And in the process, you're hurting someone who's defenseless. And yeah, we would always do a negotiation. We would say, okay, if you're watching a cartoon, let's watch it for 10 more minutes. There's the clock. And when this show is over, we're going to go to the beach, okay? And they say, okay. And so they get included in the decision. There are a, lot, a number of strategies. However, if we give in to our emotion, how do we treat our spouse or partner? If we're willing to take a hand to a helpless child, does that mean we're going to take a hand to a helpless partner? What, what does that say about us and our ability? How do we behave at work? when we have job assignments we don't like or don't wanna do. What is this saying about us? And I think it's a real barometer that a person would take out their emotional feeling on a helpless child. And I watched it in various versions over and over again. Well, we'll never get over your advice, Rabbi. It's always good. And it never requires ducking, dodging, or weaving, or bobbing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for listening. And I hope people pay attention to this segment and stop for a moment and not let the emotion take over. Have a good day.